Welcome to the Sprig Podcast, your source for the most relevant topics in pediatric dentistry. I'm your host, Dr. Jared Johnson. Keeping competitive in a digital marketplace with your practice has become ever more so complicated. Google has rules that they are continuously changing and to stay up on the latest items to keep your website top of mind and ranking high, you have to consider creating content that is search engine optimized. Another term is SEO. Today, I'm excited to have on the show Michael Anderson from Wonders Agency. He is an owner and co-founder. Last season, we had his wife, Laura Malley, on, and I'm excited to have him on the show to talk a little bit more about creating content that is going to help make your page rank better on Google. That's something that we all want to do. We know it's expensive, and we're going to find out how to do it today. So welcome on the show. Hey, thanks for having me. Let's start off. Why is it so important for a person to have their dental practice have an online presence, whether it's social media, and then more importantly, your website? Because the website you actually own, you don't own your social media. So why is it important to be competitive in this digital field these days? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, it's, it's so funny. I think one of the one of my favorite parts about dentistry is, you know, a lot of dentists are, are very uh, well educated when it comes to marketing. And a lot of times that leads to questions like, you know, is SEO dead? Is Facebook dead? Right? It's like the minute we understand something, we assume that it's jumped the shark and it's done. And the reality is that today, we still know that about 80% or more of people that are going to make a purchasing decision specifically related to healthcare go on to Google, go on to a search engine and do research ahead of time. And so I think I like to break this down into almost two different categories. There are people that are coming in with no preference at all. They're just saying, I want to find a business that I'm going to call. And then there are people that are coming in with a preference. They're saying, I asked around, I asked my family, I asked my friends, and there's a recommendation, but I still want to do my research. And so I think sometimes when it comes to SEO, people you know, assume it's all new discovery and they don't think about referral, right? They're like, oh, people, I, I have a really strong referral base. Those people still do research. They still try to find you. And more importantly, when they try to find you, there's other options above and below you. So you need to make sure that you're considering, am I accessible? Are people finding me? And the last thing that I'll, I'll close with on, on this thought is, I love to visualize a digital main street. 50 years ago, 100 years ago, when we were trying to find a business, we would walk down a street and we would look at windows. We would window shop and whatever window captured our attention, we'd go there. Well, today, most of us are online when we're making decisions or shopping. And I like to picture this digital main street. The farther down the street people have to walk, the less likely it is they're going to find you. Yeah, this is a good segue into what I wanted to talk about next regarding SEO, and that is keywords. You kind of touched on it. There's two different ways that people find you. You you talked about one where they happen to be looking for uh, a provider that does like a zirconia crown for kids, and they find you that way because they want the service. There's also the way you talked about where it is they come in with a recommendation and they Google your practice, whatever it is, San Diego Pediatric Dentistry, and they you come up with that keyword. So this gets into keywords. So keywords are something that you want to rank for when someone searches Google. And how is that important to be ranking high for keywords that someone may search like your brand identity and also other keywords that may be very competitive, like pediatric dentist or kids dentist, and then also words that you can rank very easily for without spending a lot of money? Yeah, that's a great question. And I think maybe I want to take a step back and talk about two things and then and then take two steps forward. So the first thing we have to recognize is that in the world of dentistry, we're talking about a very specific type of SEO. We're talking about local SEO, right? So if we're talking about a national brand like Sprig or, or someone that wants to reach everybody, they're objectives are very different than a local dentist, right? Uh, in one case, you're you're trying to, you know, affect search results for the entire internet. In another, you're trying to specifically affect results in a geographic area. And, the, you know, the first thing to think about is, is your brand. And, and I think that uh, this is something that every dentist should get right. Like, there's no excuse not to show up when people search for your brand. Where can this get confusing? If you have a very general practice name, San Diego Dentist, 
uh, or if you are sharing a name with other practices in the area. And we do have some very common dental practice names. So it's one of those things, if you're, if you're starting a practice, picking a brand is really important. How can you make sure that you are well positioned to show up for your keyword? Um, in short, what you want to do is you want to make sure that you do a really good job building out and claiming your business listings, right? So there's these, these listings. And I think, you know, we can even jump back and talk about this later because I want to get to the other part of the keyword thing as well. Mm -hmm. But, you know, there's, there's things like Google, my business, Facebook, even Uber now is a relevant searchable listing. You want to make sure that your business name, your address, your phone number, all of that is consistent in, in the SEO world. That's called the NAP, name, address, and phone number. It's almost like your social security number online. The key thing is you, what you don't want to have is you don't want to have, you know, Jared Johnson DDS as your name and then have your practice name separate. You, you, want, to, you want to make sure it's pick one and stay, stick with it. So that's the simplest way that I can break down making sure you rank for your brand. When it comes to the, the holy grail, the thing that everybody really cares about, which is, okay, well, what about if people don't know me? What about if someone searches for San Diego dentist or all on for expert or dentist near me, these general search terms, how do I show up? And there's no one answer to this. The, the thing we need to understand at the beginning is that there's a lot of individual factors that can influence how a website ranks. And so I'll just talk about a few of the core things that we look at. The first thing people overlook a lot of times, and there's some data to suggest this has changed. I still believe it's a factor, is your website URL, right? So it's the actual URL that people type in. If you think about being a search engine, let's all pretend for a minute that we're search engines. And the first thing I show you is the URL for a website. And one URL says, you know, Dr. Jared Johnson. Another one says, um, you know, teethourfriends.com. And the third one says sandiegodentist.com. And someone searches for San Diego Dentist. If you're Google, which of those URLs would you choose first? Probably the San Diego Dentist one, right? And then you can go down from there. And so we care about the speed of the site. Spikes, sites need to load quickly. We care about the content on the site. We wanna make sure that there's authentic, good content that speaks to the specific things that people are searching for. Um, and then we also compare about, we care about the performance of the site. Are people coming and spending time on the site? Google measures this. They know they want to provide a good experience for people. Um, and then there's all sorts of other more technical signals we can send like meta titles and descriptions, schema markup, that's a new thing we can talk about. Schema markup is kind of a, a, more, a more advanced thing that Google now lets people do. But <clears throat> at its core, Google is a content machine. They want to look at content on your site. And the last thing that I would add about this is that it's a mistake to think about your website ranking. It's more important that you think about individual pages. So if you want to rank for dental implants, you need to have a page on your website that is specific for dental implants and has helpful, useful information that people can digest. <clears throat> I think one of the things you hit on with the NAP, I just wanted to provide a resource to listeners. You can go right now, if you wanna just see how you're doing, I think Moz Local has a free listing. You can go check that out. I think uh, Local Viking is another service. I don't know if that one's free off the top of my head that you can see where you're ranking for certain keywords down to a very local level. If you're in a rural area like me, probably not as useful as if you're in a bigger metropolitan area where you can kind of see uh, where your practice may be able to improve and, and drawing upon. There's a few other things that uh, Google does take into effect here, um, and it, they're kind of tricky to do. I don't know if it's worth spending a lot of time on uh, as getting them, <coughs> but uh, backlinks from other websites. Can you explain what a backlink is? Yeah, so in a world in which there's a lot of factors, there's what we call our on-site optimizations. And that's really the list I just walked through. Page performance, how fast it's loading, the content on the page, even getting into the specific titles, right? If you have a, a header or a title on your page, keywords in that matter more than the body. And then there's what we call off-site factors or off-site optimization. And as part of that, um, backlinks are one of the major signals that Google looks at. And, and I think to boil it down simply, it's kind of a popularity contest. Google might say, your site looks really good, but what do other people think about you? Does anyone else think that you are relevant? And when people 
on their website link back to you, that can be very helpful. Now, I do want to clarify something. I think it's really unfortunate that in the world of SEO, people have learned the word backlink because backlink is really not, I think, the most important word to know. The real word that you should look for is something called referring domains. And I want to explain this because this might help you avoid a bad situation with someone that's trying to scam you. Here's an example. If I were to talk to Dr. Johnson today and say, hey, good news, I have this new thing. I can create a thousand backlinks for you today. Dr. Johnson might be like, whoa, that's crazy. Yeah, heck yeah. How do we do that? Well, what I could do is I could go get one website domain, you know, uh, drjohnsonsbacklinks.com, and I could copy a backlink to his website a thousand times on that page, just over and over and over again. And I would have created a thousand backlinks, but I would have added one referring domain. What is the point of this? The point of this is that when you talk to companies, when you work on this yourself, don't focus on backlinks, focus on the number of websites that link back to you. So good strategies here. Make sure that if you are partnering with anyone, Sprig might be a good example, right? Say, hey, do you have an opportunity on your website to link back to the clients that you support? If you have local newspapers or local organizations that, that you're involved with, make sure if you get an article or if they mention you that they link back to you with a backlink. A lot of times people don't know this and they'll write the article and they don't link back to you. If you're doing anything that's charitable, any donations, anything, make sure as part of that, you say, hey, do you mind adding my logo with a backlink to your website? Those sorts of things over time can make a big difference. And it's all about having a good process so that whenever you're engaging with someone in your local community, you're getting good backlinks. I would focus on local backlinks as opposed to buying backlinks on a national level. That tends to be spammy and it doesn't tend to work very well. <laughs> yeah, I think I think I had one where I spoke with uh, someone just out of the blue and said, oh, can you link back to the site? And they didn't have a really big problem with it. They just went back and added it. So I think people are very amenable. One other thing I want to caution people, I get kind of nervous. I'll get an email saying, oh, I've got this new piece that I'd love to put on your blog. Uh, would you open it and send it to me? I think that you got to be really cautious when you're opening attachments. If people like this, this could be, I see potentially as a scam to get a virus on your server. So just be careful with knowing who you're talking to and maybe do your research and homework and make sure that they're actually a, a quality person because I would hate for someone to have this nice article sent to them and, and then end up opening an attachment and, and getting scammed that way. So just be cautious, you know, do your due, dil due diligence and in, in talking with these people and make sure it's probably better if you actually know them locally or they're in your area, like you said, to be safe with that. Last thing I want to ask about, what about reviews? Does that play any weight in your SEO rank for Google? They want to put the best answer up there, right? So if you have a lot of reviews, does that help you out? Absolutely. And, 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 you know, it's really tough to determine the formula that Google has. I've seen, um, some practices that have 500 reviews, a thousand reviews, and they struggle to rank. And then I've seen other practices that have, you know, like four reviews in there at the top. And, and just to kind of guess at the equation, you could have one practice that bought their domain 25 years ago. And the age of that domain, the fact that they've owned it for so long, Google trusts it. It says, this is a really good site but they haven't invested in reviews at all. And for some reason, it's still at the top. <clears throat> but I think as a best practice, reviews are, in my opinion, very significant when it comes to local ranking. And again, let's talk about what local SEO means. There's actually multiple parts of Google that you can rank for, right? So for example, a lot of you probably are familiar with this idea of the map pack, right? That's what we used to call it, but there's this sort of local section that literally shows where you are in a map. For most of our dentists, that's the most important place to rank. And my opinion is from what we've seen that reviews factor much more heavily into ranking on your sort of Google local map section uh, and, and are a really important indicator. As far as results below that, I think the two do communicate with each other, but, uh, but reviews are gonna be a, a big part of that strategy. Again, what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that you are getting consistent reviews over a long duration of time. It's not going to be as effective to just, you know, get 500 reviews in two months and stop. It's all about sustaining a long-term trend. And Google has gotten very sophisticated at being able to track um, 
not just the number of reviews, but the quality of reviews. And, and all the way down to what is being said in those reviews, we strongly suspect and believe that the keywords being used in reviews also impact and influence how you rank for specific services. So if you get a bunch of reviews about dental implants, it's more likely that your website and your pages on your website will rank well for dental implants. <laughs> I think that completely makes sense when you frame it that way. And it just, it, something that we as dentists hate, but if you look at it as an opportunity rather than something that could be a problem, when you get the one bad review and you have the 300 other ones, you can just forget about it. So uh, definitely something that you want to have on top of mind. I want to get into creating content for SEO because you can do, you can hire someone to do, you know, on-site SEO, optimize the page loading speed, change a little bit of the keywords, maybe adjust a few settings in your site with the metadata and that, but really it's kind of a marathon when you look at SEO and you need to be creating new content. I um, know that we get one new content every month and we, we definitely pay for that. It's definitely worth it. And then I'll, I'll dive in when I feel appropriate to, to write my own. So there's a few different ways that you can do it. If you're just kind of wanting to dabble a little bit, um, one of the plugins that I have on my website for SEO is Yoast. Uh, it's a plugin that plugs into my WordPress and it kind of guides you through the process of keywords. I get the free one, so it's probably not as ideal uh, as because you only get one keyword with the paid one, you get multiple keywords that it can rank for. The other option to, to do would be to hire a company and I think this is also something someone could fall into a trap too, because if you're looking at SEO, there's really companies that just optimize your page and com companies that optimize your page and create content. Isn't that, that's a huge difference to me, right? Yeah, I, I think so. And, and, you know, it, it's, this is one of those tough things where a lot of times, you know, it, you don't know what you don't know. And, and so SEO can seem like a checkbox on a marketing proposal. Uh, I think your your breakdown is very good in that, you know, there's kind of what we'd consider on-page optimization. You, what you can expect there is that there's going to be a much lighter touch, right? The, the company is going to probably come in, make sure that everything's performing well, that the pages, hopefully that the, the website's loading quickly. And if they're doing their job well, much like a dentist, they're going to have their diagnostic tools. And, and what those tools look like is you're going to track a lot of keywords and, and you're going to see what are we performing well for? Are we ranking one, two, three, four, five? What are we not ranking as good for? And then you go and you make targeted changes on a website. What might a targeted change be? Again, I'll pick on dental implants. If we want to rank for dental implants or maybe more specifically here, let's talk about, you know, sprig. We want to do white zirconia crowns. Um, I would look on the home page or the specific page of the website that speaks to that, and I might add more keywords about zirconia crowns to try to signal to Google that this is a good resource. So that would be sort of a lighter touch. It's not a surprise to anyone to think that writing content takes more time, more effort. And then, you know, is the content going to be high quality or is it not? And so there's a difference in the quality of content. That's where it's going to be a, a more advanced service, probably cost more money. And then in addition to that, you could add backlink creation on as well. So I think if you looked at three buckets very simply, there's the sort of simple on-site optimization, content creation, and then off-site optimization, backlinks, and listing management. <laughs> and when you're choosing a company, I would make sure that you know they're doing their due diligence and you're getting what you pay for. You need to have be aware how do they track the keywords, right? So if you do some on-site SEO with someone, they should be able to show you the improvement in the keywords that they're optimizing for. Otherwise, they're not worth the money, right? If you if you go and spend a few hundred dollars with someone and you don't get anything out of it, you, you need to maybe look at a different option. So make sure, just make sure, uh, I think Wondrous does a great job tracking keywords. You get a dashboard, you can see where you are for whatever keyword you want in your local area and see how you stack up to the competition and see how they change over time. I know they can go up and down depending on what the keyword is. Uh, setting up a blog, that's probably the, I guess the easiest way that I look at creating pages and content that you should obviously have a content page for each of the one of the services that you offer at your office. But beyond that, uh, a blog can definitely be a supplement and uh, you can definitely do this yourself with you know a platform like Yoast and some of these other kind of tools. But I wanted to ask, there's a few ways when I look at content, you want to write content for a keyword that someone is going to 
Google, uh, let's say maybe it's why are crowns for baby teeth silver, for example, right? So now we're targeting back into our zirconia crowns that we want to do. And that's something that a parent who wants a white crown other than a silver one might ask. Uh, one resource that I've used to come up with some of this content is Answer the Public. So you can, it's a, I guess, a platform where you can type in a keyword and it'll give you all types of questions surrounding that keyword. So, I mean, another example, you might type in silver diamine fluoride and you'll get all the questions that people are Googling. And those are great ways to come up with ideas to write the content. And I think it's really cool. Um, I just discovered this. You were aware of this when we discussed dis discussed coming on the podcast. But Jarvis Jarvis is the name of a a bot from Conversion.ai that I recently started. I actually made the outline for this blog post with it. Very helpful, or actually for the podcast. Sorry, um, but you can type in a keyword and it'll come up with an outline for you, and then you can go back and write in the paragraphs. So it's very helpful to just create take away that writer's block. What kind of other things do you see? that are coming up in the market that can be useful. I know some of these are, you know, <clears throat> most of the public's free, but conversion to AI is pretty expensive. But I think, uh, you know, if you use it the correct way to respond to reviews with it, it can, it has a review responder that will pop out a, re a response to someone who wrote a review. You just got to edit it to be HIPAA compliant. And what are some other tools that you see that might be useful coming down in the future? It's, it's kind of crazy that these services can just write content for you. Yeah, it's definitely, I mean, we're definitely tipping into an uncanny valley. Uh, and, and I think there's a lot of wonderful uses for them. Our team is is absolutely starting to put those to work for our clients. And then there's always going to be that point where, you know, as much as I think we all want to think we can press the easy button, you still need to step forward. And so, again, if I could step back for a second, I think, you know, when it comes to blogging, one thing I always like to clear up, because I think, again, a lot of times dentists are like, oh, blogging, yeah, I can get a WordPress blog or something like that, right? And blogs used to be separate from your website, right? There's your website and your blog. And now our best practice is to have your blog on your website. That's the first thing you got to do. And then the second thing that, that I think you need to do is you need to start to understand what, what is good blog content and what is the purpose of it. I will tell you wondrous over and over, I could pull up about 10 case studies right now off the top of my head. We have seen websites go from traffic that's in the 500 to 700 range of, of you know, visits a month and skyrocket into the four, five, 10,000. And invariably, every time that happens, when it has to do with organic SEO traffic, it's because of one or two, we call them mega blogs. And those mega blogs address a question that is a very present question for people that are searching online. And oftentimes Google will even recognize those blogs. Have you ever seen when you're searching Google, there's like a snippet that gets called out at the top. You search for something and there's like, oftentimes if you can get that snippet, you get a lot of traffic. How do you do that? You do that by addressing questions that people have. Dr. Johnson has already provided a wonderful resource here by, with Answer the Public. We use a slightly different one called Keywords Everywhere. I think they're both good. But again, the general premise here is that you take a subject matter. So you may say, white zirconia crowns. I'd like more traffic for that. And then you try to tap into the zeitgeist of what people are actually searching for. It could be how much do they cost? It could be, are they harmful? It could be, you know, can they color match? And you, you try to find like, what are moms really searching for? And once you find that, you create content for that. Now, you'll notice I did something there. I said, create content, not write content. And I want to give you sort of two options here. The first one is, the old fashioned way. You, you, you schedule time, you're a keyboard warrior and you hammer something out. And, and some people, uh, God bless them, are wonderful at that. Uh, I'm a recovering English literature major, if you can believe it. I've spent many hours hammering out uh, essays and I'll tell you that I need that 3 a.m. pressure to really get it done. So for me, I like to find other tools. Jarvis uh, by Conversion AI is a phenomenal tool. And it actually has extended its tool set quite a bit. Um, even since our last conversation a few weeks ago, Dr. Johnson, they now have a live writing feature. And it, again, I think you're paying like 150 bucks a month. It's not cheap, but you can start to go in there and it will literally let you write a long form essay. And all you're doing is providing sentence prompts and, um, and you can choose between multiple versions of a paragraph. My experience with it is it's amazing in that it, it really blows your mind and how well it's done. That content is all unique from all the testing that I've done. But it's it's also that uncanny value with the more you read it, the more you're like, you know, this is good enough to fool me. 
for a little bit, but it's still not a person at the end of the day. And so it's, it's a starting point, not an end point. What I like to do is I like to really embrace video. I think a lot of us have moved in the direction of saying, you know, we talk a lot via video now. Video conferencing is normal. And there's some really wonderful tools out there that lets you record video. And now the top of your blog is you. People can watch that video and then you transcribe it. And so I'll give you guys one more tool that we love. It's called otter.ai. And it is like the most affordable transcription services. There's a lot out there. You can pay people to do this, but Otter AI does a great job. It does video transcription. And so I would encourage people to look at using something like Loom or Soapbox. Uh, both of them are video platforms that you can easily record yourself. You can even share your screen so you can present or show casework or before and after photos. And then you can stop that recording you can transcribe it and probably generate 2,000 to 4,000 words of content or more very quickly and put that on your website. So that's another really great tool if anyone's thinking like, oh, SEO blogging sounds like a lot of work. I don't know how to do it. Yeah, going back, I think just what you're touching on on keywords, I just pulled up my Wonders dashboard. I had 10,961 <laughs> page views and my number one page was when should I be concerned about baby not having teeth? So that just goes back to to showing that most of my traffic, almost you know, a third of it came from one simple blog post, and that can really help you when you're looking with with Google. I love the video idea. I think we need to people need to embrace that more. And I, it's that's just a time thing, right? It's the same as getting down and hammering out with the, with the keyboard. Uh, other ways you can create content, uh, you could definitely go and outsource this to like a crowdsourcing, like a Fiverr. Or you could hire, you know, someone like Wonderist or, or another company to, to help you out. So those are just some ways. Um, obviously, it's probably more cost effective to write it on your own, but that's time value money. So uh, for me, having someone create content that they have a deadline for me and I don't have to worry about it and I can do it when I want uh, really supplements my practice. Uh, lastly, what are, I guess, the benefits of investing in, you know, the SEO? It's not like we talked about, it's it's not cheap, but I think out of all the money that I spend, it's probably the best ROI that I get at my office. Yeah, you know, it, it's, I think SEO can be a really frustrating point for a lot of people because it feels nebulous. And, and the thing I would say is that uh, you should have the same expectation for your marketing partners that you do in your practice or patients have of you, right? So the reality is it's easy for a patient to sit down in a chair and say, this is scary. I don't really understand how, you know, a crown is prepped and, and the doctor's just telling me to shut up and, you know, we'll, we'll be done. The reality is knee to knee conversations with marketers and dentists are just as important as knee to knee conversations with dentists and patients. You should 100% understand what your marketing agency is doing for you what their strategy is, and there should be some expectation set. I will set an expectation for Wondrous. If we're in a moderate market or less competitive, six months is enough time for us to see measurable results in increasing traffic and more importantly, increasing phone calls. If your marketing agencies are not talking to you in terms of conversion and phone calls, then, then you're missing a beat, right? It's not just about creating more traffic, it's about creating quality traffic and in more aggressive markets, uh, you know, we might be looking at 12 months uh, of build, which is not to say that there's nothing and then 12 months you get something. It's just more of a ramp up. So that's pretty typical. That's what we see when, when companies are actually doing the work. Now, unfortunately, there's a lot of moments when, you know, especially if you're going to spend $100 on your SEO, don't expect a lot. It's You're checking a box and you're probably getting someone that's literally sticking you into a listing management software and it's just making sure that your listings are you know kind of okay but they're not doing a lot of work i think the number one reason why seo is something that people are still investing lots and lots of money in is because google specifically which controls 95 percent or more of search results online is a place that we all go in our day-to-day -day lives to find answers and find businesses so I think it's, it's, it's not a hard concept for people to understand. They're like, I go to Google. I spend half my day on Google. It's where I find, you know, my next vacation spot. It's where I find the next restaurant I'm going to. It's where I find, you know, the optometrist that I went to. Everybody knows that Google is, is kind of the gateway for that. And while Google ads are very valuable and we recommend them, 
there is always going to be a percentage of the population that sees that and says it's being paid for. I'm not going to click on it, which means organic is the most powerful listing that you can have. If you can show up in the top three results of Google organic, your business is going to add at a minimum 20 to 30% of revenue just because you're doing that. And we've seen data to support that it can be 50% or more just because you're that visible in certain markets. So it's a really compelling reason for people to take SEO seriously. But I, I think my one encouragement would be don't fall for, you know, the, the, the done for you today, super easy button SEO. The reality is you need people to create good content for you over a period of time or you need to create good content for you over a period of time and you need to track results and adjust based on what you're seeing in the dashboard. You need to say, these keywords are not ranking well. Let's target those and move them forward. It's not dissimilar from taking an X-ray of someone's mouth, finding weaknesses in enamel and saying, let's build a strategy to make sure that tooth is gonna be in the best place it can. Yeah, I, I don't mean to offend our general dentist colleagues or anything here, but uh, I when I started, I didn't pay for it because I had a scratch start practice. I was doing all this myself. And for me, doing it myself is kind of like a general dentist treating something a specialist should be doing. So like it's good, but it's not going to, you know, you're not going to have the same result as a difficult root canal on a second molar that an endodontist does every single day. So um, I just want to... You can, I've learned a lot. I don't know all of it, but I definitely, you know, by doing it myself, I do have a good grasp of, of what I need to look for in a company. And uh, lastly, Michael, what can people do if they're interested in learning more about Wonder Services and how you might be able to have a consultation with them and see if they're a good candidate for you to, to help out? Yeah, 100%. I mean, I'd encourage people to do a couple things. First of all, go on our website, learn a little bit more about us and our team. Uh, I also love pointing people to to Google reviews, something we talked about today. You know, it, I always love like if the dog doesn't eat their own dog food, then, you, you know, you, you got to be a little worried. Um, happily, we have wonderful SEO results. You can really just type in marketing agent, dental marketing agency will show up, read our reviews. And, um, and then you can do one of two things. You can either schedule a meeting with our team online. Uh, there's a big schedule now button on the homepage, or if you have a direct question for me, you can email me directly at michael.anderson at wondrousagency.com. And I'll be happy to answer any questions you have or talk shop all day. Dr. Johnson knows that I'm, I'm more than happy to pick up the phone and, and talk marketing whenever. All right. Well, thank you again. I think this is very valuable information for all of our listeners. And uh, it's been a pleasure having you on the show today. Thanks for taking the time to come out and, and chat with me. Thanks for having me. Thank you for listening to the Sprig Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, be sure to subscribe, leave a review, and share on social media. If you have any questions or if you have a topic you would like to hear covered in a future episode, please email podcast at spriguusa.com.